If you've been in the Dragon Ball community for a while, you'll hear a lot of characters get called frauds. Vegito gets called a fraud for the dumbest reasons. It seems like Vegeta and Gohan fans are having fraud offs on the daily, but we all really know that Mr. Satan is the biggest fraud in Dragon Ball, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You see, Mark here, that's his real name according to Toriyama, by the way, is a fraud by the time we meet him at least, but he wasn't always that way. He won his first Tenkaichi Budokai, the 24th, with his own strength and techniques, but that was probably the worst thing to ever happen to him. Master Roshi entered the 21st Tenkaichi Budokai in disguise to make sure that Goku and Krillin gained humility. It was possible that winning their first tournament and receiving the most prestigious victory in martial arts would make them complacent and arrogant when there was still so much for them to learn. Mr. Satan is the realization of this. His master was dead when he entered his first Tenkaichi Budokai. There wasn't someone to make sure he learned this lesson, so he didn't. He became complacent and arrogant. Even if Goku and the others didn't enter the 25th Tenkaichi Budokai, there were other threats to his title, like his own daughter. Despite him claiming that his opponents use tricks to win or seem flashy and cool, he's the only one actually using tricks to achieve his victories or avoid defeat. A man who once became the world champion through his own merits was now only holding the title with deceit and the help of others. Yet somehow, I think he's earned the right to keep his title. And he might even be the best example of a hero, by Dragon Ball standards at least. Heroes in the story of Dragon Ball tend to seem extremely flawed, and because of that, they're relatable to one degree or another. The sometimes selfish tendencies of Goku alongside his general naivety can strike a chord with a lot of us. Our own ignorance regarding how things work in the world and how potentially impactful the consequences of certain actions are is something that most people have to deal with well into adulthood. So Goku's own mistakes resonate with us as viewers. Our main character even provides us catharsis through his heroic acts that some sometimes come after a mistake is made, making us feel like we can still do good even if we mess up. Another, more extreme example is Vegeta. Now, I'm really hoping that none of you can actually relate to being a genocidal space pirate, but at the very least, I can see relatable elements of his character throughout the Boo and Cell sagas. Sometimes we distance ourselves from the people we care about since it's easier to pretend we don't care instead of being in the vulnerable position that those feelings might put us in. But those emotions, the love we have for others will still be there beneath the surface, and potentially we won't get to express those feelings before it's too late. Just look at the death of future Trunks in the Cell games and the unbridled rage of Vegeta when he saw his son's corpse. The emotions he'd been suppressing to avoid being vulnerable had surfaced all at once and clouded his judgment in the worst possible moment. His own pent-up feelings cost Gohan an arm and almost cost them the entire solar system as well. This is why scenes like Vegeta's sacrifice in the Buu saga feel so good as viewers. The character has flaws, so his redemption and heroics feel earned. So how does this go back to Mr. Satan? How does Mr. Satan fit the hero archetype? Well, it's not even a stretch to fit him in this mold. When we're introduced to the world martial arts champion, he's an egomaniac that borders on delusional, both in the way he perceives his own abilities and the way he perceives others. This leads to us as the audience seeing him as an unlikable character and being extremely harsh towards him for only just being introduced. That isn't helped by the fact that the main cast members surrounding Mr. Satan's introduction are equally harsh in universe. Master Roshi says he wouldn't mind Mr. Satan dying, Krillin says he was rooting for Cell, and Piccolo was actually hoping that Cell had killed him, disappointed to see that he was still alive. Everything is stacked against Mr. Satan as a character from our perspective. The martial arts champion is a coward that can not admit there are people with abilities beyond his understanding. He struggles to admit his own lack of power and understanding in the situations he's in, not because he doesn't know better, but because he's afraid to lose the life he's made for himself, and by extension, his daughter. The character flaw on display here is relatable in the same way that Goku and Vegeta are relatable by taking the flaws and struggles had by normal people and exaggerating upon them to the point of near absurdity, Toriyama has managed to craft so many memorable and easily relatable characters. A lot of Dragon Ball characters follow a similar path of struggle that lets us see their downfalls and shortcomings, but also accept them and more importantly, get satisfaction from watching them rectify those mistakes. This brings us nicely to Mr. Satan's redemption in the Cell Saga, the birth of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. While the obvious players in Gohan turning Super Saiyan 2 are Android 16, Cell, and Goku, a lot of people forget that the final trigger to set off Gohan was only able to get there with the help of Mr. Satan. By swallowing his fear and buying into the things he had written off as tricks for just a moment, Mr. Satan was able to put aside his selfish 
and self-preserving tendencies in order to accomplish something far more important for not just him, but the entire world. In the end, he trusts the head of a decapitated robot instead of cowering in the rubble, useless. So what's Mr. Satan's reward for helping to defeat Cell and saving the Earth? It's retaining his title and keeping the lifestyle he built for himself and his daughter. This is where a lot of people get it wrong with Mr. Satan. He was one of the most important people when it came to defeating Cell. So the same way Gohan was rewarded by getting to pursue being a scholar, Mr. Satan is rewarded by having his lifestyle maintained. It would be seven years before we see Mr. Satan again, and he's very similar to how we left him. He still has some arrogance, but he's far more human in the Buu Saga. His estimation of his own abilities are still high, but when he sees the main cast or at the Tenkaichi Budokai, he clearly knows he's inferior to them. These are small signs of growth, but his true character change begins to become clear when he befriends the ancient monster Majin Buu. Mr. Satan knows how strong Buu is and doesn't actually challenge him to a fight, a sign of his growth from the Cell games. But he still tries to take down Buu, and once again, he relies on deceit and tricks. Of course, Buu is just too powerful to stop this way, which also serves as a lesson for Mr. Satan about what it really takes to be a champion. Dishonorably holding his title was never actually going to work. So despite him working as Boo's servant while scheming about ways to kill Boo, something else happens. Boo returns from a rampage while carrying a puppy. He couldn't fathom something not running from him, but the puppy was injured, so it couldn't run as Mr. Satan points out. So without hesitation, Boo fixes the puppy's leg, leading to it befriending Boo. He thought this animal would be scared of him, but instead it likes him. And Boo comments that Mr. Satan also likes him. This shocks Mr. Satan, but he still has a final plan to execute. So he leaves to get dog food as a ploy. Mr. Satan rigged Boo's house to explode. But seeing him happy with the puppy, he just couldn't bring himself to do it. He fronts that it's about protecting the dog, but in reality, he's seeing the change in Boo. He's seeing Boo's potential for good. When he returns with the dog food, Mr. Satan tries his craziest strategy of all. He asks Boo to stop killing and destroying. Instead of resorting to violence or deceit, he's just honest with Boo. Even crazier than that, it works. Boo agrees to stop his rampage on the earth. Then two maniacs show up and shoot the puppy enraging Boo, but Mr. Satan handles both of them in a fury himself. Boo is about to go on another crazy rampage, but instead he sees Mr. Satan protect him and the dog, a perfect representation of how Boo is influenced by the people around him, and more importantly, how Mr. Satan's heroics are the trait he latches onto the most, a huge shift from the weasel he was only a few chapters prior. But unfortunately, we know it was all in vain. When Boo becomes Super Boo, he doesn't kill Mr. Satan despite having two opportunities to do so. Piccolo noticed it as well. While acknowledging his motives were initially strategic, he also sees how this different approach of befriending Boo was likely the better way, even going as far as to call him the champion of the earth. Much later on, they find Mr. Satan still alive, and despite Trunks playing the role of the audience, annoyed that the weak and idiotic Mr. Satan is still alive when no one else is, Piccolo's change of heart has time to manifest further, once again acknowledging Mr. Satan's heroics and how he tried to save the Earth in his own way. Mr. Satan keeps getting miraculously saved during this section of the story, seemingly always around, but always written off as a nuisance or useless, when in reality, his moment was just yet to come. When everyone who's still alive goes to the realm of the Kaioshin, the information overload of the earth being destroyed, the tears of the gods alongside all of the Boo stuff breaks him. And he just writes it all off as a dream and reverts to the arrogant man he used to be. But that doesn't last. After Super Saiyan 3 Goku failed to take on Kid Buu, the solution to defeating Buu became clear to Vegeta. He had thought that Goku was number one and the only one who could finish this fight, but he was only partially right. Goku can finish this fight with the help of everyone on Earth. So it's Vegeta's plan, Goku's technique, and the people of Earth all coming together to celebrate teamwork as the end of the series. But there's only one issue. No one's listening to Goku or Vegeta. Of course, there are members of the afterlife and even the Namekians are willing to help, but basically no one on Earth has any reason to trust strange voices in their heads, especially after what Bobbity did and the strange side effects of having their key drained. As the people of Earth argue and talk down to Goku and Vegeta, Mr. Satan gets frustrated. The reality of the situation had sunk in by this point. He knows that this isn't a dream, and more importantly, he sees how distrust in what you don't understand is working against 
against them. His own tactic for coping with being stronger than himself is now being used to the detriment of the entire universe, so he snaps. Mr. Satan yells at the people of Earth, asking why they can't help and what would happen if he shared their attitude. And that's when it clicks. Mr. Satan is the savior of Earth. The minute the people of Earth hear his voice, their attitudes disappear and change. And he realizes in that moment what he has to do. He tells the people of Earth that he's the one fighting Boo and he needs their help to beat him. This isn't an ego play though. He's apologetic to Goku for having to resort to this, but the ends justify the means. With the energy from Earth ready, Mr. Satan has finalized Vegeta's plan, but there's one problem left. Vegeta is next to Kid Buu, and he can't move himself out of the way. If he doesn't move, he'll die to the Genkidama. Luckily, in an act of courage, Mr. Satan runs onto the battlefield and grabs Vegeta, his final act of selfless heroism that allows Goku to launch the attack while calling Mr. Satan the world's champion. Reaffirming to us that he doesn't deserve his title because of a tournament or a fight, but because of the person he is now and the actions he takes. While he's definitely a fraud because he over-exaggerates his own abilities, he's not a fraud in the moments when it counts. Mr. Satan just is the world's champion. Check out this video if you wanna learn about the most important character in Dragon Ball, and thank you so very much for watching.